Why do physicians order blood cultures? Well, like any lab test, to rule things in and to rule things out. Patients may have a wide range of symptoms that suggest bacteremia and its evil twin, septicemia, but the symptoms of bacteremia and septicemia are not exclusive to those diagnoses. Other conditions can bring on the same symptoms, so physicians order blood cultures to rule in and rule out systemic infections and septicemia. Bacteremia being the presence of bacteria in the bloodstream, whereas septicemia includes the toxins they release, which threatens the life of the patient. So how do bacteria get into the bloodstream? Well, there are intravascular sources and extravascular sources. Intravascular sources are just what you might expect. They come from within the veins and within the arteries. That means colonized intravascular devices like pick lines and central venous catheters, infected fistulas, vascular grafts, and any other infection within the circulatory system. So if a heart valve is infected, the infectious agent will permeate the bloodstream. That's intravascular. Extravascular sources, on the other hand, are those external to the circulatory system, but migrate into the bloodstream through the lymphatic system. Extravascular sources of circulating bacteria include infected organs, body cavities, and fluids, like synovial fluid and spinal fluid and the like. Urinary tract infections, especially from infected urinary catheters, are a very common source of extravascular bacteremia. Respiratory infections, infected foreign devices like artificial hips and pins and plates, impaled objects, and so on. You also have open wounds and abscessed teeth as extravascular sources of infection. See, all these things can start out as localized infections, then spread into the bloodstream and become systemic. That's where blood cultures come in. So why do physicians order multiple sets of blood cultures? Why won't just one set do? Well, that's because one set has very little predictive value to a physician. Just because one set is positive doesn't mean the patient has circulating bacteria. Growth in one set of blood cultures could be from bacteria from the skin, not the patient's blood. And treating a patient for an infection he or she doesn't have is a massive waste of money and resources. We all know skin has a bounty of normal flora, don't we? In fact, the same bacteria that is perfectly harmless on the skin may be deadly if it's allowed to flourish in the bloodstream. Here's a list of common blood culture contaminants. All of these are perfectly capable of causing a serious infection if the conditions are right. So we draw multiple sets to rule out contamination. See, the chance that multiple sets will be contaminated by skin flora is exceedingly remote. When multiple sets are all positive, well, it's highly diagnostic for a legitimate bacteremia or septicemia, which requires immediate attention. What's the recommendation for the number of sets? The American Society of Microbiology recommends a range of two to four sets. One set is useless, five is too many. A fifth set provides very little predictive value that's not already there with four sets. Okay, so we're drawing multiple sets so that if only one is positive, the physician can disregard it. But what if the patient has symptoms of a blood infection, but the results say the collection was contaminated? Well, that puts them in a real quandary, doesn't it? Because now, they have to look at other indicators to decide if treatment is necessary.